In this video, we are going to study multicollinearity in R. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, this is an educational video only and no professional advice is included within it. Okay, so let's go into R Studio. So the first step within the video is that we need to load the corresponding packages. Therefore, we're going to comment this as step number one, which is packages. To load packages, we use library function, and we're going to load AER for data, then MASS for the inverted correlation matrix calculation, and last, also with library function, CORR, PLOT for the correlation plot. To run these code lines, we go ahead, select them, and then we click Run or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent. Then we continue with step number two, which is a data. For this, we'll be using data function, and within it, we have the house prices object. This house prices object is located within AER package. So again, to run this code line at any part of it, because it's a single code line, we go ahead and click Run or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard. So notice that this creates house prices object within the global environment as a data frame. And if we click on the spreadsheet kind of icon, this opens the data for us. In this video, we'll only be focused on the first columns of price, lot size, bedrooms, bathrooms, and stories. The reason for this is that we would have a multiple linear regression model in which the dependent or explained variable is price, which is being explained by the independent or explanatory variables of lot size, bedrooms, bathrooms, and stories. So going back into the code file, if you have any questions regarding this data, you can go into the help tab and search for the object name, which is house prices. We go ahead, select it, and here we'll see the documentation on house prices. So then we continue with step number three, which is variables. Here we're going to create a new object named IBAR because those are the independent or explanatory variables. The reason for this is that multicollinearity is tested only on the independent or explanatory variables. Therefore, it is equal to, and from the house prices object, we select here, comma, meaning we're selecting all the rows from columns two to five. So those are the columns which include the independent or explanatory variables. So we go ahead and press Ctrl Enter on the keyboard to run the code line. And we see that this created an IBAR object within the global environment, also as a data frame. And if we click on this project kind of icon, we see now that the data is only the independent or explanatory variables of lot size, bedrooms, bathrooms, and stories. So back into the code file, now that we have the data ready, we can continue with step number four, which is multicollinearity. And we're going to test multicollinearity through an inverted correlation matrix. Therefore, we go ahead and calculate it. For this, we're going to create an object named IBAR for independent variables, inverted correlation matrix, ICOR which is equal to GIMB, and within parentheses we have COR, and within parentheses IBAR. So what we're doing here is, with COR, IBAR, we are calculating the correlation matrix for the independent variables. And with GIMB, we are inverting that correlation matrix, therefore calculating the inverted correlation matrix. If you have any questions regarding this GIMB function, again, you can search for its name within the help tab or directly within the console. You can input question mark GIMB and without parentheses and press enter on the keyboard. And you will see within the help tab its documentation. 
When we calculate the correlation matrix of those independent variables, it will remove the column names of the data. Therefore, what we do next is we are going to rename the column names with col names of that independent variables invert correlation object. And they will have the same column names, col names of the independent variables data frame. And also we want to modify the name of the rows. So this will have row names of those independent variables in very correlation matrix equals to the column names of independent variables data frame. To run these code lines, we go ahead, select them, and we press Ctrl Enter on the keyboard. So now we calculated the invert correlation matrix, which is right here within the global environment. And as we can see, it's a matrix, and we want to visualize it. So there are three ways of doing it. We can go directly and select the object name and click Run or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard. We can also go ahead and input the name right here again and press Ctrl Enter on the keyboard or we can go directly into the console input the name and press Enter on the keyboard so those three ways are exactly the same so here we have the inverted correlation matrix specifically for multicollinearity we want to focus on the principal diagonal of this inverted correlation matrix which includes the variance inflation factors for each of those independent or explanatory variables. Also, what we're going to do here is we want to visualize this inverted correlation matrix. Therefore, we are going to use the function, which is C-O-R-R, P-L-O-T, correlation plot. And first we have the correlation matrix. In this case, it's the inverted correlation matrix of I-B-A-R, I-C-O-R, the one we just calculated. The method we'll be using equals to number because we want to display the corresponding numbers of the inverted correlation matrix and is dot c o r r is correlation equals to false because this is an inverted correlation matrix so we go ahead and press ctrl enter on the keyboard and we see the chart right here so let's go ahead and zoom into it So as mentioned previously, in this inverted correlation matrix, we focus specifically on the principal diagonal. And those are the variance inflation factors for each of the corresponding independent or explanatory variables. So this is the one related to lot size, this one related to bedrooms, and so on. So to test multicollinearity, if these values are between 5 and 10, then the corresponding independent or explanatory variable might be highly correlated. If the value is greater than 10, then the independent or explanatory variable is highly correlated. So we're going to close this chart here. And as we can see, these values right here are exactly the same as the ones we have here. Again, focusing on the principal diagonal of that inverted correlation matrix. Okay, so now that we finish with the code file, we go ahead and save it. And with this, we finish this video. Thank you for watching.